is a C3 kid. Hi, welcome to C3 Kids. Dear. 
here so you took game out of this atmosphere Print high stakes and pump fakes You feeling like you can't vibrate I can hold your hand but I can't turn your eyes to freedom Get you through this Hold on, hold on These are the promises I never will forget I never will forget So hold on, hold on The Lord ain't finished yet Hold on, hold on you get you through this Hold on, hold on These are the promises I never will forget I never will forget I know your heart been broke again I know your prayers ain't been answered yet But it ain't over yet no. It ain't over yet So get up and move Oración. Pónganse de pie y adoremos todos juntos. ¿Están listos? Estamos listos. Me quiero acercar a tu lado está que el cielo sea real. Y la muerte nega Quiero oír las voces de ángeles hoy Cantando unidos Aleluya Santo, santo, poderoso Gran yo soy Al que sino incomparable Poderoso, gran yo soy Me quiero acercar, a tu lado estar Al mundo amar y lo oscuro odiar El valle de huesos de revivir Cantando unidos, aleluya, santo, santo, poderoso, gran yo soy, al que estilo incomparable, poderoso, gran yo soy. No hay poder infernal que pueda resistir ante el poder y la presencia del gran yo soy, 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 gran
Kids. Ahora vamos a repasar la visión. Una asignación. Encuentra la libertad. Descubre tu propósito. Y haz la diferencia. Bye, Bye Kids. Kids. Bye. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Wow! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, Jesus! They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle. And thought the believers were just acting oddly. Yeah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, "Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you!" He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven, and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them, as He had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, "Brothers, what should we do?" Peter told them, "Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit." Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. Three thousand people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshipped together at the temple every day. Met in homes for the Lord's supper and shared their meals with great joy, all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Well, as you guys know by now, today we're saying the Holy Spirit helps me win. In fact, everyone, say it after me. Say the Holy Spirit helps me win. But here's the thing: How exactly does the Holy Spirit help us win at life? You know, the Bible talks about how the Holy Spirit is there whenever we are born again. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside, and He's there to help us make good choices whenever we don't know what to do. In fact, He helps us not by Talking to us, where we can hear his voice, or by a feeling on the outside, it's something kind of like a knowing on the inside of us. Let me show you kind of what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a stoplight. You see, sometimes the Holy Spirit will give you a green light, meaning, man, I just know that I'm supposed to go and I'm supposed to talk to that person. I'm supposed to help that person out. Or maybe the Holy Spirit will give you a red light. Meaning, on the inside of you, you just know that I'm supposed to stop for a second. I'm supposed to not go and do that. You see, the Holy Spirit guides us from the inside, kind of like a stoplight works, telling us when to go and when to stop 
He's there to help us make good choices so that we can win at life. But even though he's trying to guide us, kind of like a stoplight guides us, it's our job to make sure that there aren't any distractions in our way. Just like a little bit earlier when I told you the story of my brother Ben, he was distracted by something else when he should have been looking at the road and at the stoplight. And if he would have done that, he wouldn't have gotten to a huge car crash. It's the same way for us. We have to make sure that we aren't getting distracted. So the question is, what are some of those distractions that could keep us from hearing and seeing what the Holy Spirit wants us to do? How about this one? This first distraction of maybe it's the type of music that you listen to. Maybe you listen to some music that has some bad words in it, that cuss. Maybe in some of your music it has things that you know you really shouldn't be listening to. You see, whenever you listen to music like that all the time, it's like it's covering up that stoplight. It's like it's distracting you from what the stoplight and what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Or how about this one? How about movies? Stuff that we watch. Maybe it's a TV show or a movie and you know you shouldn't be watching this because of what the people say, what's going on in this movie, this TV show. And it's almost like a distraction that's covering up. It's, it's distracting you from the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Or how about this distraction? How about our friends? Sometimes our friends can be a distraction as well. If we're hanging out with friends and every time we hang out with a certain friend, they're always doing things that we know Ah, I know I shouldn't be doing this. I know this is wrong. I know that if my parents were around, if there were any adults around, that I would get in huge trouble. If we're always hanging out with friends like that that are making us worse, it can be a distraction for us. It can cover up what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us that we should do. Or how about this last distraction right here? How about our attitude? Sometimes if we have a bad attitude, it can cover up what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. The Holy Spirit is still trying to tell us, hey, you need to go here, hey, you need to make sure and stop and not do that, but we can't see it. We're distracted because we have a bad attitude. Every time our parents tell us to do something, man, we get mad, we're slamming doors, we're stomping our feet, we have a bad attitude. Every time our teacher gives us another homework assignment, man, we get mad, we, we get angry, we just wish that we didn't have to do this, and that bad attitude it's covering up, it's distracting us from what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. So here's the thing. The Holy Spirit wants to guide us from the inside. He wants to help us win at life by telling us what choice to make. But here's what we have to do. We have to learn how to get rid of all of these distractions. We gotta make sure that there's nothing blocking the way so that we can see clearly what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. So here's my question for you guys. What's a distraction in your life? What's something in your life that's maybe been distracting you from what the Holy Spirit wants you to do? What's a distraction that you need to eliminate and get rid of this week? This is the Bible verse of the week. Mis ovejas escuchan mi voz, yo las conozco y ellas me siguen. Les doy vida eterna y nunca perecerán. Nadie puede quitármelas. Juan 10, 27, 28. So remember, the Holy Spirit wants to help you win at life. But it's your job this week to go out 
and make sure to get rid of any distractions that will keep you from His help when it comes to making the choices that you need to make every single day. You know, we've been in this series called Win or Lose, and we've been talking about how we want to win at life. And the Bible pretty clearly tells us a very important choice that we need to make if we want to win. It talks about how we need to choose to be a part of God's family. It's what the Bible calls being born again. Now, there may be some of you in here, you say, Pastor Dan, I've, I've never heard of that before. I'm not really sure what that means. It's basically, you might have heard it like this, when we ask Jesus into our heart. It's a big deal. We become a part of God's family. That's when we get the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. So if you've never done that before, you're not really sure what that means, that's okay. Because right now, I want to show you how you can get that and how you can become a part of God's family. Right now, I'm going to say a prayer, and I want you to say this prayer after me out loud. Right now, everyone bow your heads and close your eyes. I want everyone in here to say this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to come to this earth, to die on a cross for me. But I believe that you raised him from the dead. Right now, I choose to follow you. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you just said that prayer for the very first time, you are now a part of God's family. You just chose to win, and that is a huge deal. In fact, everyone, Give them a huge round of applause. Give it up for them. Remember, C3 Kids, the Holy Spirit helps me win. Bye. See you next week.